everyone, it's Jennifer with DP Addiction Adventures. Hello. And I just thought I'd throw this out there. Something that I'm learning and growing with. And I wanted to go over DMC colors, Pantone colors, RGB colors, um, what is CMYK colors, you know, why is color all these different levels and scenarios and thought I would jump in. So let's start with RGB, okay? So RGB is um, basically where you combine red, that's the R, green, that's the G, and blue, that's the B. And you add them together. So the main purpose of the RGB color model is for the sensing, representation, and display of images and electronic systems such as televisions and computers. And it's also been used in conventional photography. So before the electronic age, the RGB color model already had a solid theory behind it based on human perception of colors. Okay? So, it goes on to say that RGB is a device-dependent color model. Different devices detect or produce a given RGB value differently. Okay, um, so basically, let's see here. Typical RGB input devices are color TVs and video cameras, image scanners, and digital cameras. Typical RGB output devices are TV sets of various technologies, computer and mobile phone displays, video projectors, multicolor LED displays, and large screens such as jumbotrons. Color printers, on the other hand, are not RGB devices. They use the CMYK color model. So, um, why is this important? Basically, color is created by projecting red, green, and blue at different variations and crossing them over to create color over a digital market space. Um, so basically, RGB is more digital, okay? Now, that, because they mentioned K, M, Y, or C, um, MYK color models, let's switch over to that. That's something that I know a lot about because for um, a long time I had to learn different print levels and what they mean. So think of your printer when you have to put in those different cartridges. You put in yellow, cyan, which is a blue, magenta, which is the red color, and then black. Okay, so C is for cyan. Y is for yellow, M is for magenta, and B is for black, okay? And basically, that is for print. So you've got digital, which is RGB, and then you have um, the CMYK, okay? So that stands for, well, K is black. That stands for anything that is printed. So a majority of the world's printed material is produced using CMYK process. And they there's a set um, special subset of Pantone colors that can be reproduced using these colors. So um, basically it's crossing these four um, color palettes together to formulate printed material of the color that we see. Now, where does Pantone fit in? So I was down this bunny trail of color. Pantone began in New York City in 1950s. It was a commercial printing company by the brothers Morris and Jesse Levine. And in 1956, um, they hired a graduate student as a part-time employee, and he used his chemistry knowledge to pull pigments together and create inks for Pantones. And that helped with color swatches and across um, the path of different designs and, and adding um, more of a standardization of P, it's PMS, <laughs> C 
color guide. It was so funny when I was learning about Pantones and working with graphic designers and um, basically I learned, I don't know if this is online, but I learned that Pantone, a PMS color, is a way to merge RGB and the CMYK or, um, colors together so that it was more standard for like paints and printing and across the digital board with the print board connected. Now I don't know if that's true, um, but it also allows metallics and fluorescence to be printed as well. Um, so it, goes, it surpasses the palette that CMYK or RGB allows you. So it takes it to the next level based on degrees and level of variations. So I don't know a lot about Pantone, but I do know that um, you know those who are in the print company and paint company can help me out in that area. I'm not an expert at any of this. I'm just sharing what I'm learning as I'm down this bunny trail. So that leads me to DMC. So you've got RGB, which is for digital. You've got um, CMYK, which is for print. And then you've got Pantone, which crosses all modalities of color. And then you have DMC, and DMC is for fabric and textiles. So those are kind of the basic differences. And I just wanted to read straight off of the DMC um, website. And then we'll get into like all these colors and how, how they work. So just kind of a little bit of a history straight off of the DMC.com about us website. It says early trailblazers, the founders of DMC, Jean-Henri Dolphus, Jean-Jacques Schmauser, and Samuel Cochlin were the first to manufacture hand-painted Indian prints in Europe. This set the tone for a company that would stay ahead of others in the textile in industry. So they also brought in a chemist and they were able to process cotton in a way that gave it a silky appearance, made it strong, and created what we now know as that DMC thread that many people use for cross stitch, okay? So, from the day the DMC factory opened through today, it says our employees continue to take great care in creating the finest thread in the world so that every product you work on can become exceptional. Our factory remains where the DMC story began in Mulhouse, France. Though the company has grown into a global operation with its products in over 125 countries, its roots in this French city remains stronger than ever. Back in 1746, DMC did not simply open a factory in the small city of 4,000 people. It created a community. As the biggest employer in Mulhouse at the time, it took responsibilities for employees by creating things like schools, hospital, and employee housing. Its impact was so great that a museum was created to celebrate the significance of the country or company. So um, basically they created a way to add color into this cotton silk format and that's where we came up with DMC, okay? So there's 400 and I think we're up to, let me just double check how many colors. I don't want to get it wrong because they keep adding more colors. Um, Alright, it's not showing me on the About Us page. Oh, 489 colors are available total. I think that includes some of these light effects and um, variations and satin over here. Um, 
But this you can get on Amazon, I'll put a link down below, is the newest version of the DMC chart. Um, it starts the DMC colors. Let's see where it starts. <sighs> Do -do -do. All right, so column color number. So DMC starts at 150 and then you have your variations. There's some colors that are lower um, than that. And that's where you get your blends and pearls and, and different things like that. Um, so 150 through, let's see here, 3860. Five, I think they have a 3866 on here as well 3865 okay so they do have a 3866 now I only thought it went up to 3865 but they have a 3866 now so what does that mean for us okay so our diamond painting is not digital. Our diamond painting is not printed on paper. And so the closest thing is, even though it's not thread, maybe textile, okay? So I wonder if that's why they picked DMC instead of the other ones, who knows? Um, so that's a little bit of the history. Now. What does that mean for me? Well, if we have plastic bags that are, um, our little drills come in, that's what this number is. And then what I do when I'm, when I'm doing a diamond painting, and I have a video on this, is I actually take the number off the package. Some of the packages are like this in little baggies. Whoops, where are you? Let me get you. There you go. In little sealed baggies and they have the number on them. Some of the packages are in these type of baggies and have the number on them. And then what I do is I create a number on the front so it has the symbol and the number so I know when I'm done that I can put them away. And when I put them away, now this is down below in my description, I put them in these Elizabeth Ward containers and I have them numbered, okay? So this is 524 and in here are all my leftovers. Now you don't have to keep your leftovers. I know some people throw them away I'm a crafter. I've needed my leftovers before and I didn't want to spend money on Etsy. I probably would have saved money because these containers cost a little pretty penny sometimes, even when they are on sale. But I also thought down the road I might be able to use them. I know some people have glued them on pens um, to make like a, an actual real diamond painting pen with diamonds on them. Um, I thought about, you know, making my own blank canvas. I thought about, um, I don't know, I'm still thinking, but I thought I've already paid for these. Why not keep them? The colors are beautiful. I have like six of these that are filled with round or square, okay? So that's what I do with my extra drills and the drills follow from the bags that I use. So they go from here to here, this is when I'm working on something, and then they go into here, which is long-term storage, okay? So let me put this away. So I have some room. Other ways to use the DMC color to your advantage is sometimes they come in packages like this, where they're not weighed, these are weighed, but these are like maybe anywhere from 180 to 200 in each little bag. 
Um, so then I put it into my short-term storage, my working storage. And then you may find either on your canvas or on an inventory sheet a list with the DMC colors as well. Now what I like about the list is sometimes you have something like this painting where there's no DMC on there. It's number one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to 13 and it's only the symbols. So that's great for working on this, but what do I do after? So I pay attention. Are there DMC colors on the actual package? And if you look closely, you can see 162, well, they all say 162. This is a bad example because that is the number of the painting. Let me show my other example. So this one I would have to match up. This one is a better example. So on these packet, on this canvas, it just has the numbers right there. So like A34, A11, A26, A22, A15. So those aren't really DMC colors. But if I pay close attention, to the packaging. On here, you can see there's a DMC color. So this is 166, this is 3819, this is 703. So if you pay attention, Sometimes you get lucky, and if it's not on the canvas, it's on the package. Now, my philosophy is if it's not on the package, I end up tossing them because I do not have time to match them up. I know some people work really hard to match them up. That's great, but I've got to spare some of my time. Some of the canvases will have the DMC numbers on them. So you can also make a photocopy or you can handwrite the DMC colors. Um, sometimes it'll say DMS. I don't know why it says DMS. I don't know if it's a China thing. But yeah. So let me put this away while we're talking because I have one last thing I want to show you. I just kind of thought this was a little bit cool, like to know the history of DMC, know that, you know, to get the crinkling out of the way. You know, the difference between color palettes and why we use different colors. So the last thing is I bought this off of Etsy. And I will try to put the link below, but she's not selling them anymore. Um, but basically what she did is that she took the DMC numbers and she converted them to RGB for printing. So she did not create the RGB conversions themselves, but she did research and found the conversions on the internet and trusted they were correct. Some colors are spot on and some may have a slight variance. But what these are is they're little circle stickers with the stripe across it so that you can visually see the color of the DMC. And so I bought two copies. They were $8 a piece because I thought this would be cool for future storage. Um, and I will see if she has um, included orders are, so I have square and circle labels supposedly. No, she says I have square and circle, but I only ordered pack and teens, um, two circle and that's what I got. So I got what I ordered. But yeah, I just thought that was cool. I might use them down the road to label my long-term storage. Who knows? 
Um, she wasn't sure if she'd offer this again. If it is still live on her Etsy site, I'll put it up. Um, but if you're watching this video years down the road, it of course it's probably not going to be live or she's moved on. Um, put this here so I don't lose it. Um, so yeah, so that's the conclusion of my working with color, enjoying what is DMC, finding out that it's textile, finding out that it's from the 1700s, it's from France. Um, I just thought that was really cool to learn about that it was created by three people and then they added a fourth person for chemistry or who was a chemist. Um, and so in the 19th century, they continued to move forward with it and they're hoping to continue to look forward to 200 plus more years. So yeah, until next time, I hope you have a wonderful evening. I hope you know a little bit more about color and when you're looking at DMC codes that you just kind of understand that it was from, you know, long, long time ago and that it stood the test of time. And I hope you just really enjoy diamond painting. So until next time, be blessed. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.